Hello, I'm Regina McCann Hess, president of Forge Wealth Management, and welcome to our Women in Wealth series. Today, we're going to talk about merging finances after marriage. And obviously, there's a lot to think about there. Brand new life, brand new everything, right? But money matters can seem like kind of a daunting challenge for many couples. So I want you to consider three simplified steps as you work with your financial advisor or investment professional to merge your finances and prepare for a future together with your new spouse. The first step's pretty easy. You just gather your statements. You wanna fully disclose your income, your savings, and of course your debts. And a lot of people coming into a marriage, especially if they're younger, they're gonna have student loan debt that they're probably both gonna to need to talk about and disclose. Um, your financial advisor sometimes can help guide this conversation with you, um, but they also need to have a clear idea of what your combined balance sheet will look like uh, to establish a foundation for future decisions and goals. Um, you want to use bank statements, investment statements, credit card statements, um, you know, car loans, obviously the student loan uh, documents, um, you know, any kind of savings, anything with a dollar on it, essentially. Uh, also, any other documents uh, to get an overview of your financial situation. Also included in there, take, take out your uh, life insurance plans um, with that as well, if you do have any. Step number two, talk about financial goals. Discuss it with each other. What do you want to accomplish both short and long-term? Do you want to eliminate debt? Do you want to save for a house? Would you like to plan for retirement? Do you want to save for your children's education? Uh, a financial advisor can help you have this conversation but you're also gonna to need to think about your own goals um, in light of your risk tolerance and your um, timeframes that you have to achieve them. Uh, this is especially important as you consider life-changing events as the birth of a child, or in the case of a second marriage, welcoming stepchildren into the family. Uh, planning for long-term goals is critical to financial harmony. Step number three. Compare your savings and spending habits. Now, this is often a sensitive issue uh, if one partner is a saver and the other is not. You wanna document and discuss these patterns uh, and be flexible so you can reach a compromise that you will both be comfortable with as a couple. And a great way to um, kind of look at this is look back at the past several months of your bank statements, your Venmo accounts, um, and of course your credit cards. A lot of hidden spending on um, the credit cards and actually Venmo is hard to keep track of um, because it's just, you know, money in, money out, money in, money out. So if you go look at that statement, you, might see, you may see, um, you know, some of your spending and where it's going to. Step number four, create a budget. Once you have an understanding of each other's current financial situation and spending habits, it's time to plan for monthly expenditures and savings goals. Now, there's many websites uh, that have downloadable budget forms you can use. Uh, you could also email me at Regina Hess at Forge Wealth if uh, you would like a, a creating a household budget uh, form that I can give you. It may seem like a tedious task, but if you have a plan on paper that you can review, um, you can manage expectations and hopefully avoid some of the conflicts that come. Step number five, compare insurance plans. Many working couples compare their employer's health benefits um, and decide whether it's better to opt for a family plan or keep individual coverage. Also, your auto insurance may offer discounts if you combine them along with homeowner's insurance under the same provider. Step six, change your beneficiaries. This step is always important and particularly so if this is a second marriage and if either of you have children from a previous relationship. First and foremost, create and amend your will, updating guardianship of stepchildren if necessary. Uh, you need clarity about who will own your assets should something happen to you. Uh, your advisor can help you assemble a team of professionals, including your tax advisor, legal advisor, uh, to ensure that your estate plan is clear, complete, and up to date. Now, in addition, you want to go through your investment accounts, savings accounts, retirement accounts, insurance policies, um, and other accounts, and just review your beneficiary designations, <clears throat> amending them at where, they are, where they need to be updated. Um, that's a step that a lot of people forget to do for many other uh, life event transitions, 
Uh, so it's really a, a good habit to get into to review that annually, actually, but definitely when you're, uh, you know, having a life transition as such as going into a marriage. All right, step seven, open a joint bank account. You know, now we have our budget in place. Uh, we want to think about our joint bank account. A joint bank account is wise for managing combined household expenses and savings. Many couples, however, also maintain separate accounts for personal discretionary spending. So as long as you both agree on the purpose of each account, there's no reason why this option shouldn't succeed. Again, just be sure to communicate your needs and concerns clearly so there are no misunderstandings down the road. Um, live example of this, uh, I have a friend who has adult children who are married and the husband and wife actually have, a, they have a joint account and they each have their separate accounts and they, they have gone through the budget, budget process and they know what the household bills are and what you know their portion of the household bills are expected to be paid. So they each get their check deposited into their single accounts. And the, every month they put money into the joint account to cover all the expenses for the household. And then they each have a little slush account for their, you know, fun, fun spending or fun saving that they can do on the side. So this works really well for them and several other people that I know are, who are in newer marriages. And it gets them on a great foot because they're actually communicating about their finances. They're discussing their household needs. Uh, they're being, um, you know, just smart about their spending. And it's, you know, out there for both of them to see. Um, and then they have their quarterly financial meetings so that there's no real big surprises versus one person taking care of everything and the other person not really, you know, uh, being in tune with everything going on. So that this way there's no surprises. Um, so a lot of the young couples that I know are using that method and, and have been very happy with it. All right, so step number eight is uh, considering a prenup agreement. Now, many couples find it difficult to broach the topic of a prenup agreement because there's really nothing romantic about it. Is there like, hey, let's get married. Oh, and by the way, let's do a prenup. I mean, they're kind of a buzzkill, right? But, you know, hey, if you guys only have an apartment and a paycheck, yeah, you probably don't need a prenup. However, if you have real estate, a business, assets, um, you know, from before getting married or previous married uh, marriage assets, or children from a previous relationship, or significant debt or assets, then you want to consider one. It's critical to consult a legal professional regarding the rules on community property, which address joint ownership of assets and debt brought into the marriage, as well as property acquired after the marriage. So you want to think of a prenup as another form of insurance. No one anticipates a car accident, um, but when it happens, it's essential to have coverage. Couple key points. Be honest with each other and your financial advisor about your current financial situation. Budget thoughtfully in light of present and future needs. Uh, work toward sharing uh, long-term savings goals. Review annually or semi-annually with your financial advisor. Uh, also, determine if it is beneficial to combine accounts and insurance coverage. And of course, you always want to discuss estate planning, and that, that would include updating your beneficiaries and things like that. Well, thank you so much for joining me. Again, I'm Regina McCann-Hess, president of Forge Wealth Management. Um, I appreciate your time. You can find my website at forgewealth.com. I am on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube at Forge Wealth, and on LinkedIn, Regina McCann-Hess. Go make it a great day.